More than 100 uh, trucks carrying United Nations aid have crossed into northwest Syria since the earthquake struck. The UN says the welfare of those in the rebel-held region is of the greatest concern. Hospitals are struggling to cope with the influx of patients. Aid agencies say children are at grave risk and need full support, including clean water, food, blankets and psychological care. Well, let's talk to uh, Kieran Barnes, the uh, country director at uh, Mercy Corps Syria. Um, Kieran, welcome. I know you've been going in and out of Syria to, uh, to help victims. Uh, tell us about what you've seen, the conditions there at the moment. Uh, paint a picture for us of your experience, if you would. Yes, thanks, Jamie. I mean, this part of Syria is an isolated pocket. Uh, we are not actually able to go in as international staff, but we have Syrian staff on the ground at the moment who, who were there during the earthquake and then are responding since. It's a very desperate situation. Um, sadly, the infrastructure has not been invested in for 12 years, so it's very fragile. There is not the same amount of equipment available or expertise uh, to help survivors, unfortunately. Our team has seen uh, families standing next to rubble and hearing people inside but are just simply unable to do anything about it. There are also people sleeping in cars because either they've lost their homes or, or they're actually afraid um, of, of the buildings. Um, there's also a lack of fuel for people to keep warm, to burn, so they're using rubbish and burning those uh, as the only source to stay warm. It's, it's incredibly desperate. And more recently in the last couple of days, we've heard people saying there's not enough food available in the markets or the prices have gone really high. So just to be clear, um, you can't enter the country. It's only your Syrian staff who are able to cross over. Can you explain why this is still a problem all these days on? Yes, I mean, this has been the, sadly the story of Syria for, for the whole of the conflict. It's, it's extremely political. The country is broken into different parts and it does make access uh, very difficult. Um, so we remote manage our projects like a number of other international organizations and we rely heavily on a, a really strong team who, who live there uh, and work in those communities. But this is also tough for them because they have been traumatized as well uh, and, and as they're trying to respond. It's extremely difficult and sadly we have not seen the scale of response required um, to this disaster. Many people obviously have been living out in the open for what is over a week now. I mean, I'm just wondering what the situation is regarding uh, their shelter and, and their warmth in what is still winter. Yes, yeah, so and maybe to, to put it in, in a picture as well, there, there were already 2.8 million people who were living in these kind of shelters before the earthquake due to uh, the conflict. Now we have a significant increase because of what's happened with the earthquake. We're working with uh, others to, to provide tents. Again, it's very basic. It's not ideal for the winter, but it's the most immediate thing that we can do. But we're also pulling together shelter kits so we can make something a little bit stronger or potentially start refurbishing some buildings that are less damaged so that people can use them. But it, it's a terrible time of year uh, for this to happen because of the winter conditions. Thankfully, we do have some pre-positioned stuff inside uh, Syria that we could start to distribute immediately and we've been doing that for the last week but we are going to need a lot more in the coming weeks and therefore we need the border crossings to be working both for the UN but also for the commercial sector we need to be able to buy things in Syria that we can get out to people as needed how big would you say is is the need and and how much are realistically you able to give at this moment yeah, it's very difficult to kind of put the big picture on that in terms of big numbers um, because because of the nature of the, the difficulty of getting information out of this part, the connectivity and trying to map the scale. But what I can say is with our team, we have 45 staff on the ground. We we are looking at this at that we need to double in our size, double in our response. Um, we're already doing a lot in Northwest Syria before this, but we need to we need to double it. And it's going to I think the need is going to increase over the coming weeks and months and therefore we need the international community to step in the biggest thing we have right now is a gap in funding uh, we've been waiting and calling uh, for more funding to come in and sadly it's just not at the level that it should be at the moment and kieran for ordinary folks around the world who are not uh, running governments um, who are appalled at this tragedy what is the the thing that most people can do i'm guessing that sending food and clothing is is a clumsy way of helping vi victims of an earthquake. 
Yes, it's, uh, people, are, people have been incredibly generous. That's the one good thing. The, the, the public, the general public, have already been very generous, and, and we would encourage more of that. But the best and most ideal solution uh, is to send cash to organizations like Mercy Corps and others, um, because we can move that across the world very quickly. Uh, we can get that into Syria, and we can buy locally, which means it's the most cost-effective way to respond, and it's the fastest way to respond. So uh, if people are, are, are looking out for Syria, that, that would be the op best option. Kieran, good to talk to you. Thank you very much for coming on the programme. Hope we uh, speak again in uh, the coming weeks and days. Uh, Kieran Barnes, Country Director at uh, Mercy Corps Syria.